Hey, this is Matthew with BI Polar. In today's data culture video, we're going to take a closer look at the important role that experts play when building a data culture. Let's take a look. All right. In past videos, we've talked about community. We've talked about champions. We've talked about how a data culture involves more people using more data in the right ways to make data-driven business decisions. This is what makes a data culture a data culture and not just a culture. One of the things that many people and many organizations lose sight of is the fact that even though Power BI is a self-service business intelligence tool or has self-service BI capabilities, it does not mean that you can simply throw the tools and throw the data at self-service users in the business and expect there to be success. Regardless of the tools that you're using, if you want a solution that scales, if you want a solution that is maintainable, if you want a solution that delivers enterprise BI capabilities, you need enterprise-grade talent to develop it. Now recently, my team at Microsoft, the team that I work with in my day job, keeping in mind this is my personal channel and my personal opinions, but some of my team members have been publishing guidance documentation on the Power BI Documentation Center with a focus on how Microsoft has developed its discipline at the core and flexibility at the edge model for managed self-service BI. The diagram that I've shared here is actually taken from one of these documents, so the link is going to be in the description of the video below, but this is showing how Microsoft and its KPI Lake approach, so KPI Lake is our internal name uh, for this central disciplined core for our BI data, it shows how that KPI Lake team is structured and some of the ways that the core team relates to and interfaces with external stakeholders from various business groups. Now it's worth noting that at the top of the diagram, we have three different rows that are labeled finance and sales and other. Every business group that wants to be part of this solution, they essentially need to provide both funding and resources so resources on their side and the funding for resources uh, on the BI uh, central BI center of excellence team for the data that they want brought in and made part of this disciplined core of analytics data. Now for each one of these, uh, these functional areas or business areas, there will be a data manager or a data lead, uh, an analytics lead, and a PM lead that are responsible for this area of functionality within the business area. The data lead will lead a team of data engineers who are responsible for data ingress, ETL, and data warehousing, basically to make sure that we're pulling the right data in the right way from the right sources and incorporating it into things like conform dimensions or properly structured fact tables so that the analytics team can build on top of it. The analytics team will have a set of skilled engineers that are working on the data model, so the measure definitions, you know, all of the things that you put into DAX. So uh, I am not a DAX expert, uh, as anyone will attest, so I'm not going to go too far down that path. But basically, people that know more than me working to ensure that the data model both works well with the underlying data warehouse uh, or data lake or other sources, but also serves the needs of the business. And the PM team is responsible for interfacing between the, the BI technical folks, those data and analytics engineers, uh, to make sure that they are implementing the needs of those business customers, as well as doing outbound and inbound communication and so on, essentially treating each one of these uh, functional areas inside the KPI lake as its own product with the management and the discipline and the rigor that it requires. There's also down at the bottom a set of sh uh, shared capabilities, things like having platform engineering, infrastructure support, 
and release management. So each one of these is a standard discipline for building and delivering commercial software or services. The same capabilities are necessary if you're actually going to support hundreds of thousands of users or even tens of thousands of users for a BI application. Now, when my colleagues were putting this together, one of them, a gentleman named Michael, was very insistent, like, this is how it must be done. This is the way to be successful. And I, I was a consultant for many years, and I will always look at a problem and, and say that the solution will depend, right? Like the standard, it depends answer. Because if it's a complicated problem space, there are often multiple successful ways to implement a solution and the one that is the right for a given scenario will depend on both the hard and soft requirements and characteristics of that specific problem and the priorities of the people that are determining what is right. What Michael saw was that in Microsoft's Finance BI, other things that we tried didn't work, this way worked. And, and this approach, it worked because Every data engineer, every analytics engineer, every PM, and everyone working on those shared capabilities, they were experts. They were some of the best at what they did. And honestly, this is why Michael is on my team now. He works with the same global customers that I do, helping them do similar things. But that level of expertise, that level of knowledge and skill, and the ability to look at complex problems and problems and say, this will solve the problem and this will not, that's something that cannot be overstated and it's something that you can't be successful without. You can't expect a self-taught analyst who is new to the tool or new to the space to deliver more than a personal or team solution. Uh, so obviously different people have different learning curves and different abilities but you can't expect someone who is not an expert to do the work of an expert when you're thinking about that central BI solution and platform. Now, if you read through the document that this diagram is taken from, you'll see that there's a lot more details, both about what Microsoft has done and what the responsibilities for each of these roles are inside Microsoft's specific solution. So you go read that. I'm not going to try to, to replicate it here. But the thing that I do want to point out, which is in that document, is that this KPI Lake solution implements what we call a pay-to-play model. Similar to how in a previous video, we talked about how getting stakeholder buy-in is important because this is how humans value what they're given. If you earn it, you value it more. The same thing is true in the enterprise when it's not just a person, but it's a, a department or business group or business unit uh, that needs to put their money where their requirements are. For any of the business groups inside of Microsoft that want their data to be included in the central flagship BI solution, they need to fund their part of the data model, their part of the end-to-end -end solution, and their portion of the shared platform capabilities. This is both an upfront cost, and it is an ongoing cost, and it is non-negotiable. If you want something, then you need to pay for it. If you value it, then you won't resent paying for it. And this basic model, even though what Microsoft is doing, I haven't seen any other organization following the same specific approach. Almost every organization that I work with, so dozens and dozens of global enterprise companies with tens of thousands of people using Power BI, they all have some sort of pay-for-play model where the business groups that want access to a premium capacity or access to support or access to some shared service that that central BI center of excellence is going to be maintaining and supporting for them, it comes out of their budget to supplement the IT budget. If they don't want what IT is offering, typically they're able to do self-service on their own, but the ability to have their critical workloads 
developed in part by and managed in part by a central team of experts, that's worth something. That's worth money. It's worth investment if it is an actual priority. And the final thing that I want to point out is what happens if you don't hire experts? What happens if you try to do it the cheap way or the easy way? Usually looks something like this. One of the types of engagements that my team at Microsoft is involved with is escalations. So big companies, they're having a problem. Uh, we are sort of the tip of the spear uh, for the solution to these problems. So there are people on my team with deep expertise and decades of experience. We will come in and work with these customers and their partners and their account teams to identify problems and identify solutions. And the thing that we see again and again and again is that when we get pulled in to an urgent escalation, the majority of the time, the problem is that people were deploying work that was performed not by experts and expecting it to scale and perform like a professional application. So if you're a Power BI professional, you understand uh, the relationship between the data source and the data model. You understand the importance of having a star schema. You understand that there are some things that you do in DAX and some things that you don't do in DAX. You understand uh, that the number of visuals that you have on a report page will make a difference. You understand the limitations of direct query. And I'm not going to go through a whole list here, but essentially, as an expert, as a professional BI person, you have knowledge that will allow you to say at multiple points through the design, development, and release process, you can say, this thing will work for a couple hundred records, and it's not going to work for a couple hundred million records. And you can avoid problems before they begin. And as we saw in a previous video, when we were looking at the special snowflake nature of, of uh, enterprise and managed self-service BI with different levels and tiers, some organizations let non-experts do a ton of the work, and they're validated uh, and uh, checked by experts before they're deployed. But the key thing is the experts need to be involved in some places. Now, I have seen some organizations say, we're always going to outsource all of our BI development, and we are always going to go with the low bidder. And these organizations always end up having problems because they don't invest in the expertise. And I do want to emphasize that Power BI has capabilities that make it easy for people of a wide range of experience and knowledge levels to be successful in more and more ways. But when you are starting to talk about very large data sets and very large user bases like active, uh, active usage, the importance of expertise at more points in the development lifecycle, it only gets more important. Don't think that you can do it at scale without experts being involved along the way. I hope this was useful, and I hope you will get support as you spread this message uh, throughout your organization. Either way, we'll see you next week.